What's going on, crew? There was an exciting announcement today around OpenAI introducing function calling within their API, which is pretty cool because up until this point, we've been kind of wondering, and I've been wondering, how are they actually choosing which tools to use for their plugins? And they're starting to peel back the onion layers and let us know how to do this. So what I want to do in this video tutorial is go through their announcement blog post, show you some of the key points that were really exciting to me, and then I want to run through a Jupyter Notebook where we do an easy, intermediate, and more advanced option for how to use function calling within your own applications. One of the interesting waves that we're seeing with language models is increasing their capabilities outside of just normal text generation. While poems about your cat were really fun to do back in October when ChatGPT first came out, there's a lot of systems that need to make decisions as well. And when you use a language model as a reasoning engine, well, freeform text isn't the best way to talk to other computers. It's better if you can do it in a JSON format. And that's what function calling starts to step us towards. Let's jump into the blog post. Awesome, so here's this blog post that came out with function calling and other API updates. So the important parts here that I wanted to call out was they have a new 16K context window for GPT 3.5. That's not bad. Now, they said they weren't gonna do it for four because it's too expensive and they have GPU costs right now, but we'll get there eventually. Now, the interesting part is the function calling functionality that they described. This is only going to be available in two static models. And so you can't just use this with regular GPT-4 or 3.5. You actually need to call out the June 13th version, which is uh, what they had today here. The interesting part is it's going to be able to convert queries. So email Anya to see if she wants to get coffee next Friday. Well, you can specify the output of that natural language request that you wanted to return back to. Previously, you would need to do some fancy prompting for this. So if there's any way that we can offload this uh, format to OpenAI, who will guarantee its output and format, then I'm happy with doing that. Uh, so we can also do with API calls or database queries, and we can extract structured data from text. So this is going to be pretty cool. Now, uh, function calling example, What's the weather like in Boston right now? So call the model with the functions uh, with the functions and the user input. So you're actually going to call OpenAI and you're going to say, hey, here's what the user just said and here are the functions that you have available to you. Okay, And then what it's going to respond with is it's going to respond with uh, the format that was specified within the function itself. All right. Now with that uh, format that you specified in the function, that should be the same format that you need to go and pass to your other systems. So what you would do is you would go and pass pass that response from the language model over to your API. So now you don't have to do any parsing of the two in between. And then with that response that you got back from your API, so in this case, they got the um, weather back from the API there, send the response back to the model to summarize. So what we have here is we have a chat history message. Now this is a series of messages. There is a user message, which is what the user asked in the first place. There is the AI message that said, hey, you need to go pass this information over to, uh, this is the function that you're going to use. And then we have information around what was returned from the function. So we have a new role, which we hadn't seen before, which is the role function. It's the name. It's the get current weather function, which is corresponding to this function right here. And then we have the response, which is going to be the response that you've got from your API. And then we have the specified function down here. And then what uh, OpenAI will respond with is the weather in Boston is currently sunny with a temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. All right, so that's interesting there. Let's go try this out ourselves and let's see if we can have some fun with it. Awesome, so I spun up a Jupyter Notebook that we can go and work through here. I wanna work through those two examples and then show how we're gonna introduce this within Langchain itself. Now, we're gonna do the vanilla OpenAI example first and then we're gonna move on to Langchain and then a complicated example. So we're gonna import our packages here, make sure our API keys are all set. And then the first one we're gonna do is the vanilla OpenAI example. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna exactly just do what we had beforehand, but I'm gonna define a function that's called get current weather. And so we're going to give it a name, which is get current weather. We're going to give it a description, which is kind of, uh, this is the instructions that the model will know how to, which tool to pick in the first place. Get the current weather in a given location. Okay, cool. Then we're going to give it some parameters and then we're going to give it properties. So here we're going to give it a location and a unit, and you're going to define the type, the description. And in this case, you can even find the enum values if you only want a specified number of values to come in return here. And then your return parameters that should come back. Well, in this case, we want location and we want unit to come back. Let's go ahead and run that. And so for the user query, what's the weather like in Boston? Let's mix this up because this was just what was in there before. What's the weather like in San Francisco? 
<clears throat> and so keep in mind, again, this is vanilla OpenAI. We're not using Langchain yet. We're going to call OpenAI chat completion create. We're going to use GPT-4. And remember, this is the June 13th model that we need to use. And we're going to give a series of messages. So in this case, we're going to give it just one message, which is a user message. And the content is going to be the user query, which we selected up above here. We're going to pass in our functions parameter, which is our function descriptions up above. We only have one tool that's selected right here, but this is a list. You can do multiple tools. We'll get to that in a second here. And then for the function call, we're going to do auto. Now, this function call, it specifies whether or not the bot should return by using a function or not, or should it choose in the first place. And when you have auto, it's going to auto pick for you. If you were to put this to none, then you don't want the function to be used and the function won't be used. So what we get here is we have our AI response message. Now, the content is null because there's not a message per se. It's not actual content message, but we do get a function call response back to us. And here we have in our arguments, we have the location and we have San Francisco, which has been parsed out. And then we have Fahrenheit, which has been parsed out for us too in the unit. And the name is the get current weather function. So let's go ahead and clean this up here and we'll get our user location and user unit. And I made a simple function here. That's just a static function. It's going to return some data for us. It's going to give us the weather in this location and for this unit. Let's go ahead and run this. And then for our function response, let's get this. All right, so what we have here is this is the message that mimics what we would get back from our API call. Now, this will usually be a confirmation of a change that has been updated or maybe a success message or something like that. But either way, this is the response from the API. And then what we're going to do is I'm actually going to replace that one we're going to get a second response. And so we're actually going to send our response back to OpenAI. And so we're going to use GPT-4. And for this user, this is going to be the message history that we had beforehand. So the role, we had a user message with content, and it was a user query, which is what's the weather in San Francisco. And then we're going to pass it our AI response message. So this is representing what it sent back to us in the first place. And then we're going to give it the uh, response from the API. So we're saying, hey, you told us to go call this function. And we just did call this function because we called this function get current weather. And here's the response that we got from the function. It's going to be all this really good information. And it's going to notice that we got the weather and we got the forecast. And then with that, let's print out the second, let's print out the next um, message here. Currently, the weather in San Francisco is a sunny and windy with a temperature of 72 Fahrenheit. Now, this is cool because what it did was is it got that API response from us. It knew what format it was working with, and it gave us the natural language response back, okay? Here's the vanilla example about how to do this in OpenAI. Let's go and check this out how to do this in Langchain right now. So the key part to keep in mind here is that with any new uh, technology that's introduced on the OpenAI side, it's going to take just a little bit for uh, us to understand what's the best way for us to work with it. And it's no different for Langchain either here. So I've done a few workarounds, but kind of utilized what they've done so far. And the, and the team has been amazing. They actually just put out an update just earlier today within an hour of this new framework coming out, and they already had support for it. So as we continue on, I imagine there's going to be more and more support for it. All right, so we're going to import chat OpenAI because we're going to use GPT-4. We're going to import a human message, which is going to represent what the human is saying, the AI message. Now, in order to mimic the function message, which we saw up above, I'm just going to do the generic chat message here, and then we're going to give it a custom role. We're going to import some tools that we might have some fun with. Let's go ahead and update these, GPT-4. All right, so we're going to do the move tool. And so this move tool is just, hey, how do you want to move some files around? And this is actually the example that Harrison showed beforehand. And then we're going to format each one of those tools into the function uh, schema or the function calling schema that OpenAI wants to see. Let's do this. And then let's take a look at these uh, functions that we have right now. So you can see we have our name, we have our description, and we have our parameters as well, which is going to be uh, the different information that it needs to know how to use those tools. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pass a human message and we're going to say, hey, please move file foo to bar. But the important part is that we're going to pass in the functions right here. And this functions is going to be the list of tools that it has available to us. So let's go ahead and run this. And then let's take a look at what we have here. So on the additional keyword arguments, we have our function call one, which is going to be the function call that we're going to get back from OpenAI. And this is the Langchain way to do it. It's saying that we need to use the move file tool and here are the arguments. Source path is foo, destination path is bar, and that is expected for us. Now, I want to do a little bit more of a complicated example. So I want to do multiple tools, but then I also want to do multiple requests within one user query. Okay. So now let's do a function descriptions again. So this is going to be a list of tools. You notice that I have two tools right here and we'll get to the second one. Um, the first one is going to be an edit financial forecast. So make an edit to a user's financial forecast model. The reason why I did this one is because financial forecasts are littered with parameters and there's a lot of different ways you can go and update it. 
All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna specify the parameters and we're gonna give properties. I'm gonna have three properties. Year, which is the year that you wanna edit. The category, meaning the, the category, the thing that you wanna edit. And then the amount that you wanna edit by. This isn't by dollars, we're just gonna use units to make it simple. And then for required, which is what we want on the output on the way back, we're gonna ask for all three of them because we don't want to skip anything. Now the second function that we're gonna do is gonna be a print financial forecast. Send the financial forecast to the printer. And we're gonna have properties again. We're just gonna have one property, which is the print printer name. So this would be my expectation for, hey, I'm about to make an API call. I need to call a printer name. Please help me figure out which printer I want to do. We're going to say it's a string and it's the name of the printer that the forecast should be printed to. Um, and then the cool part that is, well, I only have two printers at my house. I have a home printer and I have an office printer. So I just want you to pick one of these. It's pretty cool that we can specify this on this level and not need to go deal with prompts or uh, making sure that it's uh, super strict or anything like that. So the enum will be uh, these two printers and then required printer name. Let's run that. Now for the user request, this is where I thought it got pretty interesting. Please do three things. Please do three things. Add 40 units to 2023 headcount, subtract 23 units from 2022 OPEX, and then print out more my forecast at home. Now, this is three requests baked into one, and I thought it was pretty cool to see how they're dealing with this, which uh, I'm excited for you to check out as well. Let's run this user request. Now, what we're first gonna do is we're gonna take that user query or user request, and we're gonna pass it through our language model. Now, this is where I talked about, it takes just a little bit of massaging on these early days until we get more support on it, but I'm gonna string these messages together. So our very first one is we're gonna have a human message and the content is gonna be user request. So it's literally just a human message with these three things on it. And then we're also gonna pass it our functions with our function descriptions, which says our two tools above. So let's run this and let's see what the AI comes back to us with. All right, so for the content, remember there's no content necessarily because it's not really uh, a message that it's sending back, it's more of a function call that it's doing. So for this function call, it wants us to do the edit financial forecast, which is great. And for the year 2023, uh, headcount and uh, the amount in the 40, which is what we wanted. Uh, 2023 headcount and 40. So that looks pretty good. Uh, let's take a look at what this was again. And we'll take a look at the name that it comes back with here. It's just edit financial forecast and there's that same information. Um, we can clean this up if we want to. We can go ahead and parse this and we can see our year headcount and uh, the amount that comes through there. Now what I want to do is I want to pass this information back to the language model itself and let's see what it wants to do for a second time. So now I'm doing predict messages again, but we have our human message, which is the original request with all three different requests in there. And then we have the, AI, we're going to construct an AI message and the content is going to be the first response additional keyword arguments. Now that is going to be this information that's right here. So what we're doing is we're telling the language model, hey, you already responded back to us on this first request. And then we need to make a chat message, which is where we're going to specify our functions that come in from here, because this is the response from the API that we got. So in make believe world, we just updated our system and we got a response back from our system that says, hey, this was updated. So this is the function response that we got back. The additional keywords is this is going to be the edit forecast name. And this is just a phony response that I made up, but just updated the financial forecast for year 2023, category headcount amount 40. And so what the language model is gonna do is it's gonna say, oh, just got this API response back. What should we do next? Well, let's see what it thinks it should do next. Oh, cool, so we just ran this and it saw that this was successful and then it moved on to the second request. So year 2022, category OPEX, and then negative 23. And if we go back up to our messages right here, subtract 23 units from 2022 OPEX. That's exactly correct, which is, I, th I think that's really cool because it just made the decision that it could move on from that certain request. All right, so let's get this function name. And yep, again, it did edit financial forecast, which is nice. So let's do this a third time, all right? So we're gonna pass in our original user request that had three different requests on it, or three different queries. We have the first response. This was the updating in 2023. We had the second response, which is subtracting in 2022. And then what we're gonna say is, is hey, we just did both of these. So this function name, it was the edit, it was the edit financial forecast, and then the content, hey, we just made the following updates, 2022 OPEX 23, year 23, headcount, and 40. Now, I purposely made this sloppy just to show you that it can interpret some pretty dirty data right here and it knows what to do. So once these two updates have been successfully made, well, there's only a third one that's really ready to go. It's to go print it out. And if we're gonna go check this out, we say, what's the third response? Oh, we need to go print the financial forecast. And then the argument is gonna be the printer name because 
I said up here, then please print out my forecast at home. So it just saw that the first two uh, requests were done and it just printed it for me. Or it didn't print it for me, but it told me to go print it for me. So it knew what to do. Now, what's cool about this is I'm kind of bringing my own tools to the table and I'm doing my own printer work and I'm doing my own model update work, but this is the reasoning engine that's kind of telling my systems what to do. So I'm really outsourcing the intelligence to OpenAI and really it's intelligence through an API, which is nice. And if we look at this last fin uh, function name, it told us to print the financial forecast, all right? so let's close this out. We have no more function calls to make. So what's it going to do for us now? Well, here's the original response. Here's the, um, here's the response that it gave us for the first call, the second call, the third call about how to print the thing. And then I'm going to go ahead and tell it that, let me see if I can move this just a little bit for you. I'm going to go ahead and tell it just printed the document at home. This is my response that I got from my own system that I'm going and telling this um, the language model. And let's see what the response is for us here. Um, great. I have updated the financial forecast per instructions. It has also been printed at your home. That is pretty, pretty cool because we just strung together a whole bunch of different commands and it chose which tool to use well, not only did it choose which tool to use, but it also chose when it didn't need to use a tool and it needed to give us a natural language response back. Now, now I'm really stoked to see how y'all are gonna be using this for your chat models. I think there's gonna be some really cool functionality comes in here. Now, it's nothing revolutionary per se, but it's offloading a really complicated and kind of messy part of the um, prediction process that we hadn't had beforehand. So please share your work with me. I love seeing it on Twitter. Please email me in comments, whatever you wanna do. Let's go have some fun. We'll see you later.